Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is a slider. And you get exactly zero cookies for guessing why it's called a slider. Sliders are one of the quickest, easiest, and most convenient ways to get those beautifully cinematically smooth flowing shots which can add that nicely pro-looking polish to many types of video shots. The problem is, for amateurs, aspiring filmmakers, and shoestring budget cinematographers, they're not exactly usually the most affordable bit of gear you can add to your repertoire. There are budget options, but most of which are complete garbage, like the $140 I wasted on this Moby slider piece of crap, which I reviewed a little while back. And if you poke around here on YouTube, you can easily find some DIY instructions for building your own out of PVC pipes and bits of old skateboard. And to their credit, some deliver very good results, and some are even quite robust as robust as you can get from something built from offcuts of plumbing supplies. But this slider I've discovered is inexpensive, ready to go out of the box, made from machined metal and not bits of plumbing offcuts. So let's put it through the old blunty review machine and see what spits out at the other end. Hmm? So this is what you get in the box. The rails, the sled, and a couple of feet with the screws to mount them on with. The feet are simple, basically just big strong chunks of solid aluminium with some rubber feet on the bottom to help stop it from sliding around on smooth surfaces. They are non-adjustable, but even on difficult surfaces I didn't find it too hard to get a nice stable purchase for the shots I wanted. The rail too is one solid chunk of aluminium, smooth, light and very sturdy. There'll be no bowing, bending, warping or twisting under torsion here. It's tough enough, I like to imagine, that you could quite easily bludgeon someone into a fine pink paste with one of these. Or, you know, accidentally drop it without any ill effects or something equally as mentally stable sounding. It's got multiple mounting points for attaching it to a tripod or a pair of tripods if you want that super duper ultra paranoia stability or dealing with difficult and uneven terrain. I put a quick release plate on mine which made it super fast and easy to go from an elevated or angled shot to popping it on the ground for some ground level shooting. The whole thing is 60 centimeters long or if you're stuck in the steam age measurements 24 inches or just over one and a third cubits which strikes a nice balance between getting a nice amount of movement in a shot but keeping the whole thing easily portable. I threw a couple of strap lugs through the mounting points at either end and have been carrying it over my shoulder quiver of arrow style with ease. It's about as long as your average collapsed tripod so it'll easily slide into the bags designed for them too if you're after a bit more padding and protection while traveling to a shoot location. The sled like everything else is carved from a single piece of aluminium and just in case the American audience are getting annoyed now aluminum making it ridiculously robust. It's got a mount point at each corner for directly attaching a quick release plate and a central mounting thread for attaching pan heads and ball heads to and it will accept either the larger 3 8 thread found on more pro gear or the more common standard of quarter 20 thread. It even has a spirit level built onto the sled to make sure your level shots are indeed level. The whole shebang weighs about 860 grams or once more if your measurement system predates the American Civil War about 1.9 imperial pounds. The sled slides on plastic bearings. Now Many big, serious, expensive sliders will use metal roller bearings, which are very tough and very smooth, but require regular fiddly maintenance and greasing to keep them working right, and are usually ridiculously noisy as well. These plastic sliding bearings have no moving parts and are practically silent in use, and they run very smoothly across the rails. The whole system is self-lubricating, and it requires little force to move. There's a tension knob to lock the sled in place during transport, but it doesn't work very well in applying a fine amount of braking force if, for instance, you've got the slider at an angle and want to let the slide drop slowly and smoothly under its own gravity. But the technique for doing that manually isn't hard to master, so it's no great problem there. I've already tested it with a few different cameras, everything from my iPhone to compacts to mirrorless to my Canon 60D, and it works with everything, but the extra inertia of the slightly heavier gear, like the DSLR, makes smooth movements easier to obtain. Physics strikes again. And the specifications state it'll cope with a max load of up to 9 kilograms. The whole system is very simple, very effective, tough enough for serious use, and has worked flawlessly in every environment I've tried it in. And the excellent rigidity and multiple mounting points mean that MacGyvering up some kind of motorized control for time-lapse work and the like will be really easy too. But I've waffled on long enough. It's probably time I showed you what it can do out in the real world with a man, a camera, a tripod, and a slider. But before I do cut to a pretty little film, you need to know the nitty gritties of where and how much. I got it from GlideGearHDSLR.com. That's all one word. It's on the screen so you don't get confused. Or maybe I'll put it here because that'll go across my head. I'll put it here. Here-ish? 
that should do. It'll cost you just $99, which is very literally a fraction of what you can spend on exactly this type of gear, and in this humble reviewer's opinion, is a bloody good deal. You should also be able to find them on eBay, I'm told. Now then, let me show you what I actually did with the thing in my first few days of ownership as I'm wandering around the botanical gardens here in Sydney, taking some lovely shots and practicing my smooth move technique and generally explaining to curious passers-by what the hell I was doing and what this thing was. Of course, the whole thing will be accompanied by the very traditional video slider demo movie Plinky Plonky Piano Music to get you all nice and relaxed and soothed. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.